Fall checks the watch on his wrist, the timepiece of the police lieutenant whose shoes he's stepping into, trying to determine just how much time has passed since he succumbed to Bliss's morphic resonance field. God above willing, it hasn't been too long. How long? Everything feels so real. The coffee, the desk. Coffee? He pours himself a cup and moves to the doorway, straining to catch snippets of conversation from the main office before he pushes the door open. Nice award, eh, Mahoney? See that? Even has the mayor's signature, says one voice. Trust me, McConaughey, when I say the mayor doesn't even know your name. He hasn't got a clue who you are. He didn't sign it. Some secretary at town hall handles that. So you're saying what? This award isn't real? Oh, it's real enough. But you're fooling yourself if you think the mayor took the time to bother with the little details. Tired of the banal chatter, Fall swings the door open, letting his eyes adjust to the harsh fluorescent lights. The main room isn't well lit, but a low-hanging bulb comes into view as he steps inside, forcing him to raise the mug of coffee to shield his eyes. Just then, Sergeant Smitty makes his entrance, his arrival coinciding perfectly with the Lieutenant's afternoon nap coming to an end. Lieutenant, we got that address you were asking for, Smitty says, handing Fall a piece of stationery as he walks past. Address? Fall replies, stopping the man in his tracks. He still feels groggy, but the coffee is pulling him back to reality. He holds the paper up before him, scanning a name and an address. No prior record to be found. Whoever this person is, they've kept their record clean. Then Four wonders where that knowledge comes from, how he knows how to decipher the details on the page. That dame, Lieutenant Carmel Luz from the paper? Smitty says, gesturing at a newspaper sprawled on a nearby desk, as if piecing together the remnants of a fading dream, Fall collects himself. He recalls seeing Ninan Chu's picture in the dim daily news, and vaguely remembers asking Smitty to run her alias, Carmel Luz, through the channels to see what they could dig up. With these two worlds colliding, Fall tries to play it cool, blustering his way through the moment. Thanks, Smitty. Uh, that'll, that'll be all for now, Fall says. Smitty begins to walk away, but Fall adds, Oh, Smitty. Yes, Lieutenant. Smitty says, turning on a dime. That car on the roof? Uh, oh, yeah, that. The boys are still trying to figure out how that thing got up there, sir. Anything odd about it? You mean other than it being on a roof, sir? Smitty asks, cracking a smile. Yeah, you know, the, the make, the model. Just a regular car, sir. Older model, four-door, no license plates, though, burgundy. I see. Full muses, impressed by the morphic field's ability to fix the anachronistic vehicle. And Smitty. Yeah, Lieutenant. Full tries to ask the next question as nonchalantly as possible, feigning more interest in the paper before him. How long have we been back here at the station? Well, we've been back about an hour. Uh, no, maybe an hour and a half. What's wrong? You think your nap ran long today? The man adds, his smile unwavering. Good, Smitty. No, 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 that's good. That'll be all. Sir. Smitty says, and walks off none the wiser. Returning to his office, rather to his alter ego, Damon Handler's office, forecloses the door, crosses to the desk, pours himself a drink, and sits down to pour over the document Smitty handed him. Only an hour or two. Phew. But that guy said nap. And... Fall checks the watch again. Guessing from the commotion out here, this 3 o'clock must be 3 p.m. and not 3 a.m. So difficult to tell time here in the dim lands, Teddy. The brightest it gets is like a dreary winter's day. I could have sworn it was early evening back at the hot dog stand. And who could blame me? No one was on the street, really. I guess it was early morning, anyway. It's all good, Teddy. All good. He says, leaning back and putting his feet up on the desk. Fool realizes that the lieutenant's shoes are a tad bit shabbier than the ones he landed here with. Well, that's a pity. He says, rubbing the sides of one of the shoes. I rather like the look of those. Well, 
we did get some good news though, didn't we, Teddy? No need to track down the Swan Song nightclub after all. Thanks to our current role, we've acquired Naninchu's address, and it seems she lives... Four pauses to look at the paper and to bring his feet back down to earth. Yes, with this other girl, Rochelle Chalmette. Great. Four mutters, taking a decent sip of the lieutenant scotch. I was just going to hit the nightclub, Teddy, but now I can head straight to the address. Wake good old Nininchu up from this living hellscape and uh, get us all home before anyone knows I'm gone. He surveys his dim surroundings, then adds, Not exactly a secret agent, but uh, it'll have to do.